Indiana Jones knows I'm going to do something I've never done before. Eat mayonnaise? No. I'm going to do something I've never done before. Change your baby's diaper? No. And don't say get yourself up because I do that all the time as well. I am <laughs> going don't. to do my own stairs. And yes, I'm going to get it done in a quick an efficient amount of time. Don't say I don't finish any work in my own house because I do and I will get this staircase done in under one day. Well, maybe two weeks because I need two weekends because I work a lot during the week and I'm always in other customers' houses. Now I'm going to be working in my own home and I'm going to give away all the tips and tricks that I've learned over 20 years of doing flooring. In my own home, just like in my customers' houses, I'm going to do a real wood staircase. None of those stair nodes are going to fall off, come loose, people are going to trip on them. Maybe they don't even match. Not going to happen in my own home and I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going to show you how to do it quick and efficient, how to make all the difficult cuts. Besides doing the square normal steps, we're going to be doing the round bottom step. We're going to be turning that into a more modern square look as well as on the landing. We're going to do something special. My son Tristan's project on that one. I know what he has in mind. It's going to be a border with an inlay. It's going to be stained to match the floor. It's going to be a two-part series, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the second part. Part two is where we install the steps. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get started and show you how we do this staircase the right way. It's so beautiful, you and me. We meant to be. So for material, what we're going to be using are solid oak treads. We have a standard 36 inch wide tread. I have a 48 inch tread for my bottom step. I have solid oak for my landing. And my secret weapon, my risers. Can you tell what it is? It's white. Has a nice little sheen to it. Pure, pure white. No need to paint. Clean it off with just a damp cloth if it ever gets scuffed up. It's my secret weapon. White laminate. So what we have here is some of the tools and supplies we're gonna need to complete the staircase project. We have a 12 inch sliding chop saw. We have a nail gun. We have a sander, which is Festool. Our nail gun is DeWalt. But any nail gun will work and any sander will work. You're going to need a rubber mallet, a hammer, a speed square, a pry bar, two kinds of sandpaper. I use 120 and 220. A brush to apply the finish with. A staining pad, not a used one, but my son has the other ones, but they look like this or anything to apply, something to apply your stain with. We have our stain we're using today. Red oak is the color. And then we have our uh, finish, which is a Minwax finish. Um, I like to use a clear satin. Um, I don't want too shiny of a look. Table saw, you may or may not need. If you do not have a 12 inch sliding chop saw, which is a monster, um, I, I also, from time to time, will use my seven and a quarter inch DeWalt. This guy slides and it's a beast or just a regular 12 inch DeWalt chop saw that doesn't slide. Um, and then an oscillating saw, not necessary, but it always comes in handy to cut in tight spots. That's what we're going to use. These are our tools of choice. If we use any additional ones, I'll make sure to put it in the comment section. Alright, so here we're at 35 and 3 quarters. So that gives us a starting point to work with. We're going to want to check the sides to see if the stringers are straight or not. Sometimes they'll pitch in or out a little bit. They're not necessarily always going to be straight and we're going to do that with a speed square. So we're going to use our speed square here to check the sides of our staircase for square. I can see with this one it's pretty close but I see a gap forming it towards the back so I can see it is maybe a half a degree or a half a degree towards the back going outwards. On this side, we look pretty good though. So what I'll want to do 
when I do my third of five and three quarters is I'll have a straight cut on this side and then a one, I'll probably start with a one degree cut to the outside on the left side of the step. And that should give us a nice tight fit. So we're at 35 and 3 quarters. I know that it's going 1 degree that way. So I'll make my mark to the front of the tread. Thirty-five and three quarters. I'll make my mark to the front of the tread. Just a little dot, and I know we're going that way because of the one degree. So. Don't be careful. Be careful. Oh, it's upside down. Almost, almost made a huge mistake. We had marked the tread on the wrong side. There is a front and back side of the treads. The back of the tread, will it work? Yes, it's gonna be a rougher, a coarser, more open grain, and sometimes there will be defects and imperfections in it. I, it happens before, what you'll usually notice is when you go to stain them and put your finish on them, it'll look slightly different because be you know it's... Lines going against the grain. Yeah, there'll be striation lines, and what do you call them, vertical lines? Yeah, so it's, you can see it's happened before. So usually, um, once we determine the right side, um, they even can get installed the wrong way. So they've, I've taken them from myself to, to the stain guy, my son, and we've got them mixed up that way. So we always, once we cut them, mark the back side with X's and of course number each tread because each one's a different size with the step. Judgment time. We'll see how uh, how short or long we are. We could be right on the money. How about that? I've done this a couple times. Nice and tight there. So let's check it on some other steps. If what I'd like to do is then take this tread and see how many other steps it will fit on. If it fits on other steps, then we can just use it as a, a duplicate and we can just copy it. It's a little, it fits there. I think it works there too. We feel getting a little bit snugger. This one, uh, it's not, this is weird. That one I got tight, this one I got way loose. Same staircase. You can't even move it here. <laughs> you would think it was a different, different house, different staircase. But this staircase is all over the place. It works again up here. Amazing. We went from fitting perfect to being really short to being perfect again. At least now we have a starting point. We can take this one, we're gonna number it. We're gonna call that step number two. I'm gonna write a number two on the back of this, and I'm gonna make a couple copies of it, disperse them, and take it from there. So yeah, I carved these out this morning myself from the back board. <laughs> no, he didn't. You're gonna miss them trees. They were some of my favorites. That's why they have a skew on them. I did that just to uh, proprietary uh, <laughs> knowledge there. Uh, now you notice the back of this suit, I'm talking about front and backs. See that? Some, st some steps, it, the backs are perfect, and then others, you're literally missing chunks of wood. Stairs are put together with strips, usually two or three inch wide strips. They're all glued and taped and yeah. splined and, uh, and then they're uh, sanded and planed, planed and sanded. Um, you can see 
a tread is actually, if you look closely, made up of separate pieces, but it's just milled together really nicely. But these are the bad sides of the boards, which are on the bottom. Which can easily work their way into your staircase upside down if you're not careful. Now, I could put a, a mark on this, my marker. But then marks vary and they hit the, the saw blade hits the tread in a different place. I just like to use the actual tread that I'm copying right on top of the new tread to make sure it's flush on the far side. If I know they're lined up correctly. Right at the last second, as I started putting the blade through, I slid the upper one back just so I didn't take any chances of grazing across there with the blade and, and messing it up. So I bring it in and it did come out a little bit tighter for the step I was intending it. However that happens, it just happens out there and I, I had marked it I know not perfect. So, but that's good though because now we can take it to one of the bigger steps and we can find a home for it. So I came in hoping or thinking it was going to be for step three, but in actuality, it looks like it's going to fit on step number four. Um, we can always check the other one as well, or it would work on number five. So um, that's the beauty of having the whole staircase ahead of you. Kind of like it on number. I kind of like it on number five, so I think we're going to call this one, two, three, four, five, and let us go ahead and put that mark on your back. Put that mark on the back right now, because believe it or not, just walking out to the saw, even I get mixed up sometimes, and you just, you turn it over, flip it, next thing you know, you're marking the next board with this one upside down. So, you always want to number your treads. For not just for the sake of knowing where they go, but to not confuse you or the person doing your staying. That may be you, that may be your wife, that may be your neighbor, that may be someone that you don't like. It could be anybody, but you don't want to confuse them. So that makes things a lot easier and it helps everybody out in the long run. So we have some impending weather. Clear that way. Oh, not clear that way. So welcome to South Florida. This is typical of a midsummer's day. We're not gonna let us slow us. We're not gonna let it slow us down though. We're gonna actually pick up the pace. These are gonna be the last two steps. We make the exact same size. Uh, after these two steps, we're gonna have to start varying the size because all the stairs are going to be slightly different. Ah. And that's about it. Oh, it's really raining now. I'm just my last one. Take them all in. Are you sure you all want to move to Florida? Everyone always says they want to move to Florida. This is Florida and for you. That's it. So, we're gonna go ahead and we should have been doing this all along. Put our number two and our number five. I don't wanna number the stairs ahead of time because then I won't know which ones are cut. I put the numbers on them. Once I get the right size tread, then I number the step and the tread. And I know I'm done with that one. All right, so we have a three available. shaking tread so we're gonna call this number six now we know number six is taken but we have one more 
that we need to find a home for. I was gonna try our lowest one. Ooh, wow, winner, winner, chicken dinner. I think we have a winner, folks, and I did not expect that, but you can see how they vary a lot, and now that fits perfectly there. So. All right, so we're going into a rain delay. Join us after this torrential downpour. Drown pour, the torrential downpour. Welcome to South Florida. So picking off where we left off yesterday before we got a uh, rain delay, literally got our operation uh, shut down and it rained and never stopped. So we're going to get right back to it. Uh, we got three steps cut yesterday and we got uh, 10 to go. So let's see if we can knock this out in under an hour. All right, so I'm gonna mark it, uh, 35 and three quarters. I got a uh, one degree angle cut that I'm performing here. And we're gonna make this one slightly bigger, and the next one we'll make slightly smaller. And that one's going to be slightly bigger. And this one we're going to go slightly <clears throat> a blade under 35 and 3 quarters. take these guys in and give them a home and then my son can start sanding them get them ready to get some stain and finish on them next all right starting from the bottom and working my way up it looks like i've already done number two number three that's why i write numbers on them i have a number four available let's see how she fits there oh perfect perfect fit that one degree angle is is cutting perfect in our straight over here couldn't ask for anything tighter than this. All right, so we're gonna keep working our way up. Now, my technique of varying the size over and under a blade or a 16th over a 16th under works really good when you have a staircase where all the steps are very similar in size. Um, it saves you a lot of time. Uh, you can spend all day measuring, you know, this stair is uh, 35 and 7 eighths, and this is 35 and 5 eighths, and maybe not even come out as good. By varying the sizes ever so slight without a specific step in mind, I'm able to find a step that they fit really good on. Now maybe when I get to the last one or two steps that don't have a, uh, a tread for them yet, then maybe measure... Uh, those exact but uh, I find that this has worked well for me over the years and I use it this technique all the time it's gonna rain again look at that That's wonderful Florida for you look at that cloud So the first code he's going to do is a 120 sanding. 
once we do the 120 standing, then he'll stand it a second time with a 220. Um, then we're going to apply our stain, our finish, that once the first coat of finish is put on, we will then sand it again with a 320 or higher grit sandpaper in between the coats of finish to give it that super smooth feeling. I usually put three coats to four coats of finish on, uh, sanding in between each coat except for the last. Let me rephrase that. He usually puts three coats on, sanding between each coat and finishes. I don't want to take credit. In case you're wondering, I did not have a wardrobe malfunction. It's about a thousand degrees out in the shade, so I sweated through my first shirt and it started to rain, so sweat and rain really doesn't feel good. So, hence, it's the same day, just a new me. New shirt me. New wardrobe. Where do I call it? Back to the stairs. This is what I do. Alright, so on the bottom, this is where I purchased the four, what I purchased the 48-inch uh, tread for. All the rest of the treads were 36-inch. This one I got a 48. It was originally round, but we want to go with a more modern look. So we're going to make it square. Let's show you how we do it. stringers is called the throat. So we want to mark where our throat ends. It's flash over there so that's a nice straight cut. We don't have to change the degree. We're just going to butt it tight there. The throat ends there and then we have to mark the other side of the stringer. There. I'm actually going to remove this baseboard here because there's no need to cut around it. By taking it off, I can then reinstall it on top of the finished tread when I'm done. Now, we're going to have to figure out how deep we want to cut this. So it's pretty simple. I can measure how far I am off the uh, last riser right now, which is about two and a, you can see it's the same on both sides. It, it's actually a little more on this side, but we have a base over here. So we'll go for this side, which is the deeper one. We need to go two and a, a little less than two and a half. So we'll put our dot on the right. We want to go a little less than two and a half. Put a mark right there on this hand. We go right here. Two and a half. Right there. So using our I want to cut the line off, so I'm going to put the mark inside of where I'm going to cut. So I'm actually going to cut the line off. Don't get any markers showing. Okay, I'm going to come back in like 30 minutes. We'll let this set up a little bit, okay? Okay. And the nice thing about a sweet speed square is it also has a tape measure on it. So I know I'm going to just under two and a half. So that helps me determine. I put my line. I'm going to go from there to there. And then we're just going to draw a straight line across. And that's our cut. That's our initial cut right there. So let's go get this cut out, and then we'll show you the next step. This is where the oscillating saw comes in handy. Funny thing is, these saws haven't been around that many years. I think back and I wonder what we used to do when we had to make a cut like this before I had this saw. I would have had to probably use the table saw, cut it in, cut it out, maybe get a jigsaw in there. It would never come out this good. I love modern tools. This generation has it way easier than we did. So, now, 
Remember I said this side was a little bit, this came out, so now we know we need to cut for this wall here so that we can go all the way back to our riser and get that where we and get this cut where we want it. So we'll mark it here for this wall. And believe it or not, that's an angle cut there. So I know that when I make this cut, remember I'm gonna have base here so I don't have to be exact either. I'm gonna I wanna come out. What you wanna do basically is see how far which in our case is almost three quarters of an inch. Now at the deepest point, I want to be almost three quarters of an inch. And then, like I said, it's an angle cut. So we'll just angle that line in. I know that I have more of a space there. So. Multiple trips to the table saw and to the saw to make these perfect. You can't do it all in one cut. You don't even want to try to do it all in one cut. You'll mess up and you'll waste a offensive tread. It was a tough angle getting in there on the saw, so I'm not sure if I cut enough up. Oh, I did. Look at that. That angle cut worked out beautiful. Remember, we're going to have our base that goes back over this. So we're going to be putting a return on here. I'm going to cut the, I don't like the cove base. They put the cove base on because some people like to put cove base on the bottom of all their, their noses. I think it's very traditional and I don't know, it's not a very clean look. So I'll actually cut that off. It'll just be the round part. That goes here and back here. I'm actually going to extend the tread out so it gets all the way to here. Let's do that now. I'm going to take a piece of tread. Uh, I actually had this left over from another one of my jobs. Um, usually when you cut treads, uh, you would buy, for example, a uh, 48 and you only need like a 40. So you usually have pieces left over. In our case, these are 36 inch tread, well 35 and 3 quarter inch wide so we got 36 so we don't have any leftover pieces so I didn't have to sacrifice a whole tread um, I've already had pieces from one of my other jobs so we're going to use that to put in this area here notice that the tread just like this tread we're going to put it backwards so it has that rounded edge to the back and when we put this together it'll work out perfect so it has that rounded edge right there so, we want to mark it. Now I can go kind of funky and try to hold it here and do all kind of, you know, one of these guys and, and try to mark it. Or I can do a trick that my teenage son taught me a few weeks ago. Because I did it this way for years, holding it. He simplified it for me in a matter of seconds, ruined my crush my world, but it doesn't make it easier. I put, a, I put this in place, I put a mark, I line it up where I want it on the front, I put a mark where it ends, I then line it up on here, line it up to the back, transfer my mark, and now I know where to cut it. The more accurate that measuring or doing anything else, I actually have my mark and I know exactly where to cut it now. And then I can use my, my tape measure to see how big this piece is here, which is five inches. Now we know we want a now we know we want a five inch piece. Get my five inches wide by our mark there. You have to listen to the to the younger generation sometimes. They do come up with good ideas. I gotta give it to the millennials. Shout out to all the millennials. You guys are smarter than the average. No, I'm not gonna say that, but.
one finish that corner of our tread to go on to the return. Remember when making cuts like this on a chop saw, table saw, or even oscillating saw, they should always use protection. Eyewear, whether it's eyewear, goggles, whatever it might be, but use something to protect your eyes. Little pieces of wood have flown into my eyes many of times over the years. <clears throat> I can't tell you how many times I've had to go to the optometrist or walk-in clinic or hospital for something flying in my eyes. Don't ask me why I don't wear them now. I do it time to time. I'm stupid. I like living on the edge. Whatever it might be, don't follow my example. Alright, so let us, we have our piece here, which will go there. And then we have our, alright, and it's a perfect fit. There we go. And we will attach this with our. I call them invisible screws. I believe the correct name for them is uh, small head screws or headless screws. I like to call them invisible screws because they're basically invisible once you put them in. They have no, no, they have a very small head and you won't be able to see them. But we will glue this and screw this. Glue and screw before we sand and fill. Fill and sand. Fill and sand. Glue and screw are going to meet fill and sand in a few minutes for a party. You know we have bottled water, right? Ah, can't catch up. A big one. All right, so we are going to glue and screw before we fill and sand. So, first thing we want to do, oh, let me show you what we're using. We're using these call them invisible screws because they are invisible when I put them in, but they're basically headless screws. Uh, they're by GRK. Um, they're called uh, trim head screws. But I've used them for years. I uh, use them on pretty much everything. They come in different sizes. Um, the only thing that's annoying about them is you have a special bit that they have to use with them. It's a T10. So if you're in a pinch, you have to take one out or put one in, you don't have the bit, you could be in trouble. Speaking from experience, of course. Besides that, though, they are amazing. So, what I like to do is to get a couple started. So I want to put at least two in where the little piece is going to go so that it doesn't take a chance of turning on me. Don't overlook how important the gluing is. There are a lot of people think, well, I screwed it and that ain't going nowhere. Well, the glue keeps it from flexing at, at all. And over time, the glue holds just as strong, if not stronger. And the screws. Wow, you hear that's my stomach. It's talking back. We don't want to be on this diet. We don't want to diet. We want greasy fried food. No. We want rice again. We don't want no carbs. We don't we don't want what's that rice I eat? Cauliflower rice. You don't want cauliflower rice. You want real rice. So. Bad enough, I got this giant hernia. Gotta lose some weight. Get back in my ideal installation. Weight. Like, it's like I'm a boxer. Like I'm a prize fighter, you know? Star athlete and my ideal installation weight. Alright, my P 
peak performance level. Yeah, I'm hurricane proofing this. <laughs> That's what uh, me and my son's nickname stuff when we're, we go kind of extreme on it. We say this is going to be hurricane proof because it ain't coming out even for a hurricane. You know what? I find that it's better to do too much than not enough. Too many people don't do not enough. But there's so many problems. The jobs that I'm called out to fix for other people all the time. They didn't do enough. It doesn't matter how many I put in. I can fill all these holes when we're staying at dark color. You're not going to see these. I had one a couple weeks ago. I like to see it after a few days. I think someone stepped on it before it set, but I can see it ever so slight, just off of a hair. And I took, I, the homeowner didn't even say anything, but I, it bothered me, even though if no one probably would have noticed. I could see, I could see where the seam came together that it was just off ever so slight. So ever since, you know what it is, two of them have to be just for this piece. And then the rest are just for here. It's good. This side now. I have to back it out and do it again. Why? Because it there's a gap. If you back it out and redo it, it'll go in tighter next time. Sometimes the screws pull it, or the screws are gonna pull it. So when we put this on, you see what I'm dealing with now. You see that? So we have to correct this one real quick. I have to take some off there. Okay, either cut it or sand it. We'll probably sand it only because if I cut it, it may mess the setting of it up. Now, yeah, that's a lot better. It's time to put our sides up. We'll apply a lot more pressure this way. screw this in flush to the top. If it's off at all, it'll be on the bottom side. Remember, we are going to sand this. So, we want it perfect, but if it's slightly off, sanding will re remove any overages. If you think that tread looks rough now, give it a couple seconds, Through a lot of filling, sanding, and some of my son Hunter's magic, this stair tread is about to look amazing. And there
there we go. Holding it, and I can't believe it. It is pretty amazing. Well, we've put a lot of work in already. This landing here is my son Tristan's creation. He promised me something special. I'm already pretty amazed. I can't wait to see the final outcome. If you want to see the final outcome, make sure you subscribe so you get notified when it is complete. Uh, our next video will show us installing and the finished product here. This is basically a three-day job. I'm installing floor and stairs all week, so I have to do it over the course of two weekends. In about a week from now, part two will be out, but before then, we'll have videos coming out from some of the other amazing jobs we're doing. So beautiful, you and me, we meant to be in the great outdoors. And more. So hit that smash that subscribe button if you want to learn the tips and secrets that have made me successful over the years. I want to take it and teach it to you. Smash that subscribe button if you want to smash that subscribe button. Smash that subscribe. Smash that subscribe button if you want to learn what I don't know how to do. Smash that subscribe button, smash the button, hit the button, smash the subscribe button, I'm trying to work it out. Smash that subscribe button if you want to learn some of the secrets and tips that I've learned over the years that have made me. I don't know if I haven't really been made <laughs> Smash that subscribe button if you want to hit that subscribe button. Take that subscribe button off the computer. <laughs> Smash that subscribe button if you want to learn some of the secrets. No, wait. Smash, Smash that subscribe button. So today is part one of my staircase. Smash that subscribe button so you don't miss part two when it comes out. Now at Jones Knows, I'm giving away the secrets and tips that I've taken a career to learn, that it's taken me 20 years, I'm, I'm doing, I'm giving away the secrets and tips that I've learned over the years. You're not going to want to miss. So that's, to me, uh, a, a thing, that's something that I always do. Um, it gives me a little extra exercise as well. Cauliflower rice. We don't want cauliflower rice. We want real rice. Stop. 